Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so happy that you're a part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to connect with us on Facebook, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at Jed Lee Magic on Twitter, and at Reading with Your Kids on Instagram. We have two great guests for you today. Leslie Wall will be back to share some of her favorite middle grade reads with us. And brand new debut author, Vanessa Harrison, will be here to tell us about the animals you'll learn to love. Speaking of love, we would love to see you at Chicago Kid Expo, February 8th and 9th at Schaumburg Convention Center, Schaumburg, Illinois. That's right, the Reading With Your Kids podcast and Jed Lee's totally interactive magic circus will be live at Chicago Kid Expo, February 8th and 9th. We're going to be creating a totally interactive experience at our booth that will give you and your kids an opportunity to find out what it's like to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast, an iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast nominee. We'll also be presenting Jed Lee's Totally Interactive Magic Circus, and you may have a chance to be part of one of my amazing illusions or magic tricks. Come on down. is Chicago Kids Expo, February 8th and 9th, Schaumburg Convention Center, Schaumburg, Illinois. Joining us on the line right now from the beautiful state of Colorado. She is a regular here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. She always comes back with some fantastic suggestions of books that we can read with our teens and our tweens, reminding us how important it is to continue to read with our kids as they become independent readers. Please welcome back to the show the author of Where You Lead and also the author of the Unexpected Role, Leslie Wall. Leslie, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm wonderful, and I'm excited to talk about faith-based middle grade books. Uh, I really love middle grade books. They're, uh, you know, I think a lot of adults dismiss them, but I think they can be really entertaining for, obviously, for for middle grade readers, but also for adults, too. Uh, Absolutely. They really are. There's some wonderful ones out there. And sometimes they're just a little bit shorter than YA, and which can be really helpful to get, um, you know, the information a little quicker, especially like a historic fiction or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And you know, I just think it's, you know, I I, th- I think they're they're I just like you said they're a little bit shorter. I think they move quicker, and you know, especially if there's a, a parents are you know busy and they don't have time to sit down and read. I just received a YA book in the mail from a publisher. It's like 575 pages. And I'm like, oh, wow. What in the world can I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, the middle grade books is bang, bang. You know, we're in a really fast paced um, time of life right now, a really fast paced society. So, you know, the, these books are, are really great. And they're, 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 there's substance to these books. Yes, um, and I think that even more so than when like, my kids were younger. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe I just didn't read the right ones, but I've just been finding them so engaging mm-hmm. and just really love reading the uh, middle grade books. Yeah. All right, so tell us what what are what are the books on your suggestion list today? Okay, so the first one is a historic fiction, and it's called The Other Side of Freedom by Cynthia T. Tony. And it's a, like I said, a historic fiction. It's set in the 1920s. And it's told from the point of view of a middle school boy named Salvatore. And it's the story of um, his life in Louisiana during the Prohibition years. And this is kind of an interesting uh, time period that you don't hear a lot about. But it was a fascinating tale about hardship, corruption, and the importance of family and faith. Um, and it was an intriguing coming-of-age story that focused on difficult choices and decisions that one Italian immigrant family had to face and try to stay together. Now, I didn't know much about this time period or that Italian 
um, Sicilian gangsters often terrorized American communities. So it was kind of a fascinating story uh, that I didn't know anything about. And um, these people went on crime sprees that affected the law-abiding families of Italian descent. And if they tried to um, interfere or turn them in, you know, it really affected their families. And they um, sometimes had to hide out and disappear and so forth because they were scared for their lives, obviously. So the re repercussions of all that was really interesting. So this is, again, an interesting time of um, in history and a great way to have some good discussion with kids about prohibition and the 20s and gangsters and all kinds of things. You know, I think this is a really timely suggestion because – um, you, you, we, we oftentimes hear the phrase history repeats itself. And while there may not be many Sicilian gangs terrorizing uh, Italian immigrants here in, in, in the year 2020, <laughs> we just went into the year 2020, uh, there are a lot of immigrant families uh, here from Central America um, or, or, or parts of the Caribbean are being terrorized by gang members who are also from those those countries and those cultures. So, you know, um, this this could help our kids uh, kind of understand what, what some other folks are going through today. Yeah, it would be a perfect tie-in for trying to figure out, um, understand the immigrants nowadays and how it's the similar to back then. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a wonderful learning topic for everyone. And I think, you know, talking about prohibition and the choices that had to be made back then when uh, alcohol was was legal and then illegal and then became legal again, that might be really timely right now because uh, there, there are many states, your state, my state, where um, cannabis is now legal. And that's raising a whole <laughs> lot of discussions and need for, uh, need, need for families to sit down and, and, and talk to their kids. Yeah. And we've talked before about how books are a great way to bring up topics, and that's a perfect example. Uh, bringing up uh, marijuana and so forth and drinking out of the blue with your kids, they might turn away and kind of not be interested in discussing it. But through a book, it's a great way to bring it up and um, get all different sides to the topic. Absolutely. So that's the other side of freedom. And who is the author again? Cynthia T. Tony. T O N E Y. Cynthia E. Cynthia T. Tony. The other side yep. of freedom. All right. Well, what are the other books on your list? Okay, uh, the other one I brought up is called A Hidden Miracle by Geraldine Harold. This one just came out a few months ago, and it's a uh, modern-day speculative fantasy. So what does that mean, probably? Yes, <laughs> but it, It's kind of speculative is what I call like something happening on a spiritual realm, and it's her thoughts about what might be happening with angels and fairies in her story. Mm. So she, in the story, fairies and angels work together to help um, people. Uh, so the book revolves around a teen surfer who is battling a deadly disease and a loss of faith while he does this. And the fairy that is kind of protecting him, her name is Gabriella, and it's her job to deliver needed gifts to the humans and help uh, his guardian angel. And she, Gabriella, and um, a boy fairy that she adores are assigned to help the surfing star. And so it's an interesting thought about what could be happening around us on a spiritual level. Uh, but it's also really interesting to see the surfing world. I thought that was a really cool thing that the um you know, kids would really enjoy hearing more about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that, that's one of the things that um, that I am aware of being part of the magic world and the circus world. Um, there are all these little kind of worlds, little communities of, of people with, with common interests that exist. You know, my son was very much a part of the of the comic con world, the cosplay world for for a number of years. And so, yeah, getting a peek into 
that surfer world, and that surfer lifestyle. Um, I, I saw some of that on a recent trip out to California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's always something that's fascinating to watch and to see. So it was kind of fun to hear a little bit more about that. And like I said, I always love thinking about, you know, if you believe in guardian angels and so forth, what's happening around us? What, what are they doing as we're going about our daily lives? I think, too, I... You know, I love that that theme of of you know kind of exploring a a character who's going through a crisis of faith. I, I think there are a lot of kids who kind of go through that, and I, I remember remember having a conversation uh, uh, at at our our church school, at our parochial school, and. Um, my daughter had graduated a few years before that, and she was very well known in, in all the school plays and, and, and whatnot, had a very high kind of profile in the school. And uh, when I came back on this one day, uh, uh, one of the moms of, of one, uh, one of the students uh, who was still there at the school asked me, uh, how's your daughter doing? And, you know, so we were sharing how, how, what, what she was doing in high school and college. And um, her, this mom was like really – Concerned, she said, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so afraid that my daughter, you know, she's going to go off to high school. She's going to go off to college, and she's going to start questioning her faith. I'm really worried about that." And I just said to her, "I said you should really welcome that because our faith can stand up to questioning, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a natural part of growing up." And um, I, 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 I think if if we as parents are are ready to embrace that and to help our kids ask those questions and help them find the answers. Um, I don't think that's anything to be afraid of. I agree. They, and by questioning it and researching and looking into it, you can get a stronger sense of faith and really understand why the beliefs are there and so forth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if you need an example of this, just look at St. Teresa of Calcutta. All of, you know, so many of her writings are filled with, you know, times when she was questioning, it, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm serving you. I don't know why I'm, I really don't know why today I'm serving you. Yeah. Um, but, it, but everybody goes through these questions. Yeah, just recently I read uh, something and it you know, how we plant seeds, but we often don't see the outcome, mm-hmm. you know, the growth of those seeds that we planted. And that's hard because we want to know that what we're doing is good and we don't always see that. But we got to know that and trust that God is working through all of our actions. Absolutely. So that was A Hidden Miracle by Geraldine. And I'm, I'm not getting last names today. Harold. 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 Oh, it's excellent. Mm-hmm. Harold, Geraldine, Geraldine Harold, A Hidden Miracle. Do you have one more on your list? Yeah, uh, one more. Uh, it's called Dear God, I Don't Get It. <laughs> and it's by Patty McGuire Armstrong. And this is another one about, you know, the crisis of faith a little bit, but it's a, a little bit younger. This um, Aaron, the main character, is in sixth grade, but this would actually work well for you know, third, fourth, fifth grade as well. It's about a a boy and his family that has to move to another state. And Aaron, the main character, of course, does not want to leave his house, his friends, his school. So he starts praying that his family will be able to stay where they are. But his prayers aren't answered and they have to move. And that's when he begins to kind of question God. Uh, so it's about how he moves um, with his family and the new school he's in and the people he meets and relationship with his brothers. Uh, but there's some really nice lessons there about um, telling the truth, being yourself, and you know understanding God's will for your family. I, that's beautiful. And, and I really love the title of this. Because in the title, when we're expressing, we're saying to God, I don't, I don't get it. We're kind of expressing a little bit of frustration and, and, and frustration with God and a little bit of maybe anger with God. And 
I think it's okay for kids to understand that that's okay sometimes. That, you know, yes. we don't understand what God's decisions are and, and purpose for our life is all the time. And that can make us frustrated and scared and even angry. And those feelings are okay as, as I guess, as long as we share them with God. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you're right. And, uh, again, this would be a good one if you're going through something or um, anything. That uh, a great book to open the discussion lines with your kids. It's a short book, and, and it has a lot of humor in it as well. But, yeah, it has these wonderful questioning moments uh, that we all do, like we just talked about. Everyone has things they're wondering about, and we don't get it sometimes. Yeah. So we just... Yeah. I, yeah. I was just out performing at a Catholic school for, for mi- middle school kids and uh, they kind of asked my story. And part of my story was I, when I left high school, my intention was to become a, a priest and uh, a, a very wise old Jesuit who was one of my favorite teachers, even though he flunked me out of Latin, um, <laughs> sat down with me and he said, because I had a scholarship to a seminary um, and, and he sat me down and said, look, look. I went into the seminary at 15. We, you don't have to do that now. You know, if God wants you to be a priest when you're 18, he'll want you to be a priest when you're 24, 25, 26. And so go mm-hmm. live a little bit and, and then think about it. And, and I did. And I went out and I was explaining to the kids that at 26, I went on a retreat and uh, the, the priest running the retreat asked me if I had ever asked God if he wanted me to be a priest. And I realized I hadn't. And that night, I asked, and I got the answer back that no, that wasn't his intention for me. And uh, at the end of at the end of the talk, uh, you know, one of the kids asked me. He said, "How did you hear? How did you know that Jesus said no? Did, did you did you hear a voice?" And and we just got into this great kind of discussion about how we hear Jesus speak to us, and. You know, I explained, no, I didn't, it wasn't like a loudspeaker came on, <laughs> but it was very clear that, you know, what God's, in, well, very clear that Jesus didn't want me to be a priest. It took me a couple of weeks later to figure out what he did want me to do. But, um, but I think that's an important conversation for our kids to, to, for us to have with our kids too. Yes. What, knowing what, uh, um, what, where we're supposed to have our lives go and so forth, but. And that quiet time, too. You're right. We don't pray and then wait for an answer sometimes. We just kind of rush through life. We're always having something going on. And um, there's a lot of things, you know, whether it's us. It doesn't have to be anything quite that big, you know, but asking where he wants us to um, be and what to do. It's good questions, yeah. Absolutely. So that is Dear God, I Don't Get It by Patty McGuire Armstrong. I finally get the whole name. <laughs> Leslie, yeah. re- remind us uh, about this new book that you just uh, had come out. It's it's in in your Perfect Blindside series. Yes, the new one just came out, Extreme Blindside, and it's the second one. Um, uh, it's published by Paul Line Publishing, and it's another it's of the exciting mystery about the snowboarder Jake and his um, journalistic girlfriend who have to uncover a mystery. And that's another, you know, the snowboarding world, that's another one of those communities communities we were talking about, like the surfer world, where uh, th- this would give you a kind of peek into, uh, you know, a, a different world, a different community. Yes, and in Extreme Blindside, he's actually at an extreme sporting event. And so uh, not only the snowboarding, but I have other ones like um, – snowmobile and skiing and so forth. So it's kind of a fun, exciting um, background there. Now, the Perfect Blindside series, a Perfect Blindside and Extreme Blindside, is this a series where you need to start with book number one in order to enjoy number two, or they can, be, can they be enjoyed independently? You could enjoy it independently. It tells you a little bit about what happened in the past, so you'd figure it out. But, uh, yeah, so I think either would be... Just fine. If you'd rather pick up the second one, that is perfect. And how was it for you, the experience writing a series? I know you've we've written a number of books, but um, is this your first series? 
Yes, it is. And it was, uh, it was really interesting. Part of it was really fun to get back to those characters, but part of it was kind of really difficult too, to get back into the same voices. And then I always worry if it will be uh, received as well as the first one. The first book, I kind of really felt like God kind of told me about the story and brought it on. So I was always like, I hope this one, you know, can do as well and reaches people as much. So hopefully everyone will enjoy it. Uh, but uh, And I have one more in mind for them in the future. So hopefully maybe I'll be able to get that one out someday too. Well, that's wonderful. Well, remind everybody where they can go to learn more about uh, Extreme Blindside and where you lead, Unexpected Role, and everything else that's going on in Leslie Wall's life. Yeah, you can uh, find all the information on my website, uh, LeslieWall.com or MinistryThroughMystery.com. They both go to the same place. And new subscribers um, have a short story for free, if anyone would like that. And I also have all my book reviews of all the other books that I review on there. So there's lots of choices of in lots of different genres that people can find books that they, for their kids. Well, we've had a great time talking about some great faith-based middle-grade books that we can read with our tweens and and with our teens. Leslie Wall, thanks so much for being back on the show. Thanks for having me. Hey, do your kids love animals? Well, you're going to love our next guest, Vanessa Harrison, as she tells us all about animals you'll learn to love. Joining us on the line right now from the beautiful state of New Jersey. She is the author of a beautiful picture book called Animals You'll Learn to Love. Please welcome to the show, Vanessa Harrison. Vanessa, how are you? I'm very fine, Jed. How are you today? I am wonderful. New Jersey is one of my favorite places in the world. It has such a bad rap. People just love to... Uh, to joke about New Jersey and 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 whatnot, but I find it's a it's a beautiful state. It's really diverse. Um, you know, the North Jersey is very different than South Jersey, very different than the coast, very different than the Pinelands. Um, it, but it, it's just so cool, and everything is just within a few hours of each other. Yes, it is. Um... Uh, we have the casinos in Atlantic City, but where I live at is basically the ocean. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I live like maybe 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes away from the, the getting to the ocean. And it's beautiful. A lot of people, a lot of people from out of towners who they call shoobies love it here. <laughs> They're here all summer long. I mean, God, oh my gosh, they don't even, they wait all the way to the end of summer, all the way to like maybe even October. And then they, there's no, no more. They're not here anymore, but they love it down here, and they they don't mind traveling. They travel from Washington, Philadelphia, Canada, uh, Quebec, all these different different areas. You know, it's, it's uh, Florida. You know, a lot of people come down from Florida have their uh, their housing their housing down here from Florida, and then they go back to Florida when it's all over with, when it's the cool air comes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about animals you'll learn to love. Uh, first, why don't you tell us a little bit about the story, please? Well, the story is about a little puppy who is named Bully, who, who, actually about a girl named Lynn who found the puppy named Bully and uh, found the puppy in, in the middle of the snow. It was winter time, and um, she heard the puppy making sounds, you know, barking sounds. Mm-hmm. And then she walks over to inquire about, well, what's going on over here? And, you know, and she found out that there was a puppy in the woods by himself, just just sitting there. Mm-hmm. So she picks up the puppy, takes the puppy, put the puppy in her, you know, in her book bag. She takes him home, caters to him, feeds him, and... um and then after she feeds them and gives them some water to drink, she even approaches her parents about keeping the puppy. And her parents were like, were not so sure about it at first, but they kept the puppy around the house. And then after the puppy was, um, uh, after, after they, they thought about it a little bit, they told her and approached her, you know, that these little puppies turn into big dogs, you know, because some, some people may not want a big dog mm-hmm. and they just like them when they're little, you know? 
And she's like, uh huh, she understood and she still wanted to keep him. And then after a while, she, yeah, the parents said yes to her and she kept them and they became, so far, they became their, their friend, they, they're also on a beautiful, to a beautiful friendship. Vanessa, what inspired you to write Animals You'll Learn to Love? I just woke up one day and said, let me write a children's book because I've always been around children and I thought maybe it would be, a, I thought that it would be a good story to, uh, not only, to, to share with others, like take my experience and share with others. Mm-hmm. The title of your book is Animals You'll Learn to Love. What are some of the things that you're hoping families will learn about animals by reading your book? Well, the responsibility of taking care of an animal. You know, uh, that's what they can learn, the, the responsibility of taking care of an animal, how to, how, how to treat an animal, and, uh, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, you said that a lot of the book is based on true stories. Did, did, did you find a puppy and try to keep it from your parents when you were young, or did you know someone who did this? No, that was, we, uh, I had brothers and I have family members, and there was, uh, we, we grew up on a farm. Uh huh. When we, I've, he- I've heard of people, um, trying to hide I've, I've i've even think on one one or two occasions we've even tried to hide uh from our my, i think it was i don't know if it was my mother or my father but it could have been both parents because um and they uh and but we end up telling because they um, we end up they end up you know it was too loud uh the the puppy making too much noise and everything like that. The animal makes too much noise. So you have to, you, you're going to have to just come out with it. So we end up telling and mm-hmm. we end up being able to keep. Yeah. Well, that was great. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I have a feeling that maybe your parents were aware of the puppy before you guys fessed up to it. If it was making yes. all that noise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When things go messing around on food, what happened to the food? You know, there's so many mouths to feed uh-huh. <laughs> that they, they are going to notice like what happened to, you know, what happened to the meat. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> now, one of the things um, th- that I love to, to ask authors is what kind of conversations do you think families can have after reading your book together? Well, conversations like, do you really want a dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's a really uh, important exercise for families to do, to take the time to sit down and and to have this discussion about the, what, you know, first, what, why do we want to ad- adopt a pet? What kind of, uh, what's, what would be the best pet to have? In this house, what kind of responsibilities? What kind of uh, of, of um, commitments are we are, are we going to have to make? Are we really ready to make those commitments? Those are great conversations to have, and I think it's a great lesson for kids um, to to you know kind of go through that process because those are the kind of uh, of of discussions that kids are going to have to have, you know, when they're deciding whether or not they can make a commitment to be on a sports team or, you know, an eight-year-old's not all that far away from making a decision to a really big decision as to, you know, do I want to go to college and what do I want to study? And I, am I really wanting to spend that much money on, on this college versus a, a different college? So I think that that's a really valuable experiences for, for families to have together. Yes, it is. Well, we've had a lovely time speaking to the author of Animals You'll Learn to Love, Vanessa Harrison. Vanessa, thanks so much for being part of our show. You're welcome, Mr. Jed. I had no problem. I loved it. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We have a big surprise. You do not want to miss it. want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Leslie Wall. Vanessa Harrison. Be sure to check out their books. Also want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all she does for the show. Check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank my beautiful audience. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for making the world a better place by reading with your kids. 
I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.